Welcome to the Game Player's Special Power Glove Game Tape. Later in the tape, we'll go into the Game Player's Laboratory and see some of the Power Glove techniques demonstrated. An expert game tester will show you how to get high scores using the Power Glove. But first, let's look at Mattel's exciting demonstration of how the Power Glove was created, how it works, and even a peek at a movie featuring the Power Glove. For your NES, now you and the games are one. The Power Glove. Everything else is child's play. Man, that was cool. I wish I had one. You want it? You got it. This is it. The power glove. This will change the way you play Nintendo games forever. You're looking at the future, kid. Awesome! That's right. Who are you? I'm the glove master. I know everything there is to know about the power glove. I'm here to teach you if you want to learn. Let's go for it. All right, but first, a little history. Giving man a new 3D method to move objects inside a video game, the Power Glove employs a new reality, virtual reality. The world of virtual reality was first exploited and utilized in high-tech fields such as space. Glove-like devices were used by NASA to allow astronauts to control robot arms and hands with amazing accuracy. Mattel Toys has been able to design and deliver its own technology to bring virtual technology to video games in the form of the Power Glove. But how does it work? Well, that's what I'm here to teach you. But first, let's check out the glove. The control features of the Power Glove are broken down into four areas. The first is the keypad. You'll use these keys for programming the kind of game you're playing and the kind of moves you can make in that game, whether it's throwing a punch, turning a steering wheel, or banking a jet fighter. All the programs are in your manual. Look up the game you want to play and find the program number. This, of course, is your direction pad. It works exactly like the pad on your NES controller. Your A, B, Start, and Select buttons also operate just like they do on your NES controller. But after you learn the secret steps of power, you may not want to use them too often. What are the secret steps of power? Listen and learn, pal. This is your center button. It is one of the keys to the steps of power. Did you get that? Sure. Then maybe you're ready for the steps of power. If you can get these, you'll be ready for your own power to power. First, programming. After you load your game pack and turn your glove on, you need to program the power glove for that game. It's easy. Look up the program number in the manual's game index. Then press Program, the number of your game from the index, and enter two times. That's it. You're now programmed. Next, open and close your fist a few times with your thumb tucked in like this. This is known as calibrating the glove. You're sending a signal about the exact size of your hand to the NES. Every time you program the glove, you've got to calibrate. Open and close your fist and be sure to tuck your thumb in. Watch and center looking at the directional LEDs. Press the center button and all the directional LEDs will turn off. Now you know you're centered. Got it! The last two letters, E and R, are the most important. E is for the extra info you get when you read the manual. Everything you need to know about the power glove is in the manual. You read and learn the different programs well, 
and you'll be on your way to becoming a glove master yourself. It goes like this. P, programming. O, open and close fist to calibrate. W, watch and center. E, extra info. R, read the manual. Not bad, kid, but there's more to the glove than that. Like using Turbo. You can use Turbo on most of the game programs. Turbo is on when you turn on the power glove. You can turn it off by pressing programming button number 7 for A and button number 9 for B. To turn them back on, press number 2 for A and number 4 for B. But that's not all. You can adjust the firing rate too. To increase the firing rate for A, press number 1. To increase B's rate, press 3. To decrease the firing rate for A, press button number 6 or press number 8 to decrease B. Listen for the beeps getting higher or lower to tell you whether you're firing faster or slower. You've seen plenty of menus and games, but the Power Glove makes menus easy. When you reach a menu in a game, enter program number 14. Press program, 14, enter, enter. Remember to press enter twice. That isolates the control panel and turns your glove moves off. Now, use the keypad to move the cursor and make your selection. Good choice, Glove Master. Next, reprogram your game number. Program, game number, enter, enter. Readjust your turbo. Open and close your fist to calibrate. Watch and center. And you're ready to continue. Secret move, one shot turnaround. The glove makes one shot turnaround so easy. In side scroll games like Bubble Bobble, you'll be using program number one and you'll find one shot turnaround very handy. By moving your last three fingers, you can shoot a quick shot behind you without moving to turn around. But my favorite secret move is the thrash mode, which only the power glove can do. Instead of firing a shot behind you, you may find yourself in a situation where you need the power to spin around and fire in all directions at once. Just bend your last three fingers. That's thrash mode, and it's yours by simply choosing program number 11 and following the steps of power. Thrash mode, that's radical. So is program switching. Program is another word for the programs that let your glove moves cause different responses from game to game. In games where the action changes when you reach a different level, like Blaster Master where it switches from a platform game to a top view game, you'll want to switch programs when you reach the new level. All you need to do is pause the game. Press Program, then number 3 for top view, enter, and enter. Now you're programmed for a top view game. Remember, if you're not sure what program to switch to, read the manual. You'll learn what works best as you practice. So, when you switch from one-shot turnaround to thrash mode, you're program switching? You catch on quick, kid. Here's something else you can only do with the power glove, the AB swap. Instead of your thumb acting as the A button and your index finger acting as the B, you may prefer it the other way around. At any point in a game, just press Enter once and you've switched them. Hit Enter again and it's back to normal. Try them both ways and see what works best for you in different games. At my level, you don't need it, but you should know about slow motion. With the Power Glove, slow motion is yours simply by pressing the number 5 key at any point in the game. No need to select a new program. Just press 5 and you've slowed down the action. Hit 5 again and you're back up to speed. You won't want to use it on all your games, but when you're trying to master a new game or the Power Glove itself, Slow Mo will give you the time you need. Now that you know how to use the glove, I'll show you how it works in the games you like. Let's have Mike Tyson. 
Just look up Mike Tyson's punch out in the index of games to see that it's program number seven. The biggest advantage of using the power glove over the NES controller is that you're actually punching your opponent. You are boxing, so where you throw your punches is where they land. So instead of pressing buttons and keys, you're throwing jabs and uppercuts. Yeah! The glove also has a couple of special moves in this game to help you out. One that'll help you get back up on your feet after you've been decked is this move. Make a fist with your thumb pointed down and you'll pop right up. This replaces the rapid pressing of the A button you'd need to do on the yeah. NES controller. Man, you're amazing. There are two modes to remember in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. When you're in the defense mode and you want to dodge, the motion of going from your fist to open hand is what triggers it. So if you want to dodge more than once, you'll have to open your fist as many times as you want to dodge. To duck, open your hand and drop it down. To block a punch, just rotate your wrist to the right. When you're in the punching mode, your fist must be closed. Then you can punch at any angle. You won't be able to punch with your hand open, so it's important to keep your fist closed if you want to get in the ring with Mike Tyson. If you have one or more stars, you can rear back and throw a star punch. Now I know you're into driving games, and with a power glove, you'll really be into it because you drive the car, like with Rad Racer. Program number nine. Right. After you've loaded your game and gone through the steps of power, press start. Then grab the wheel and steer your racer past everyone else. To accelerate, make a fist. Want to kick in turbo? Just punch. Brake, lower your fist down. When you get stuck on the side of the road, just turn your wrist in the direction you want to go. There's no need to move your whole arm. That'll just take more time. In 1943, the first thing you'll have to deal with is the menu. Use your menu selection program, program number 14, to isolate your keypad. Make your choices, then go back to your original program, calibrate and center. In 1943, as in Xevious and almost all flyover games, your hand becomes the plane. Fly it back and forth and see how the plane on screen moves where you do. Bank by turning your wrist. Try and keep your movements fluid and smooth. You shoot by curling your index finger. Hold your finger down for turbo fire. You might want to up the firing rate with button number three on your glove control pad. When you find yourself in this situation, just use your thumb to activate your stun bomb. Save your stun bombs for when you really need them, since they use up your energy. In Xevious, when you use your thumb, you'll drop normal bombs that don't take any of your energy. You'll find that flying with the power glove makes you feel like you're really in the air. You've been playing all your sports games in 3D now. The power glove puts you right in the middle of it. Program number eight works best with most baseball games. Imagine your hand is in the middle of the baseball diamond. Check the LED panel and you'll always see where you are on the field. Swinging the bat on offense is as easy as bending your thumb. To run the bases, move your hand towards the base you want to run to and twist your wrist counterclockwise. If you go too far and need to run back to your previous base, bend your thumb when moving your hand back to that base. To pitch, just bend your thumb and move your hand where you want the ball to go. Ooh, On defense, move your glove to the base you want to throw to and then bend your thumb to throw. There's a special finger bend for perfect throws to second base and home. Bend your thumb and index finger at the same time after putting your hand where home or second is and your throws will be dead on. show you a way to make ice hockey even more fun. It's the disappearing goalie trick.
In ice hockey, you move the glove as if it was on a table. Your hockey player moves in the same direction your glove does. If you like to score big in ice hockey, just get rid of the goalies. Turn off both your turbos. Hold down A and B on the glove and the NES controller when you press start. Now the goalies will disappear. Lots of games use program number one, and you'll get the moves down quickly. Your player moves where your glove does. Bend your index finger to shoot, bend your thumb to pass. Deliberate motions work best with Super Mario Brothers. If you need to move Mario just one step, make a quick quarter-inch jab to the right, and you'll trigger the special one-step move. A short motion to the right moves you differently than a long one. It's the same moving left. Use your thumb to jump and your index finger to shoot. Bend your middle finger to shoot and move at the same time. Playing Double Dragon with a Power Glove takes some practice, but it's worth it. The special features make a big difference, like holding your finger down for turbo or bending your index finger for turbo punching. Want a turbo kick? Bend your last three fingers. Here's the special fence climbing move. Make a fist and punch it towards the screen to climb over ladders, fences, and other obstacles. When you have enough hearts, bend your thumb for jump kick. Use your index finger to pick up dropped weapons. Bubble Bobble uses program number one, so you shouldn't have any problem with it. Remember when I showed you the one-shot turnaround? Yes! Woo! Game movement is the same as it is in most of your side-scroll games, with shooting triggered by your index finger. You'll have to program Switch to program 11 when you want to go to the thrash mode, but the key is knowing when. Save thrash until after you eat the green candy, and you'll be glad you did. Awesome! RC Pro-Am lets you control the RC car on the screen by using your gloves the remote controller. After choosing program number 10 and going through the steps of power, you won't have to press the throttle since it's pressed continuously when the game is started. Your index finger turns the car left, and your last three fingers turn the car to the right. To brake, lower your hand. And to shoot, bend your thumb. With the Power Glove, you have total control. If you want to make playing Top Gun any more real, you'll have to fly an actual F-14. You play Top Gun as if your hand is holding the flight stick in Maverick's F-14 Tomcat. Pull back on the stick to climb up. Push forward to dive down. Move the stick to the right and left to bank in those directions. Your thumb controls your machine guns, and your index finger fires your guided missiles. After you've cleared Mission 1, it's your job to land your jet on the deck of the big carrier. To do so, use your index finger to speed up and bank right and left. Here's a new game you could use with a regular NES controller, but with a Power Glove, it has a secret identity. With Bad Street Brawler, the first in the Power Glove gaming series, there's no need to program, just calibrate and center. The game pack also contains nine other programs for some of your favorite games. At the start of each level is a practice round where you can practice your moves. Here in the first level, your thumb throws punches. Your middle finger activates ear twists. Turn your wrist in the direction you want Duke to kick.
Dropping your hand down makes Duke duck, and raising it makes him jump. When you feel comfortable with your moves, press start to begin playing. Bend your last three fingers to ear twist, and then collect his weapon. Wow! As you reach the next level, you'll get another practice round, and you'll notice that your glove moves produce new results now. The new moves are all labeled, and when you're ready, start playing again. I've got a secret move that only the power glove can do, but you can only use it once for each level. When you move your hand straight out like this, Duke puts on a power glove of his own. He uses it to make the bad guys disappear. Save this move for when you're really in trouble. What about the other nine programs? How do you access those? You have to download them, kid, but you have to have your act together. At the Bad Street Brawler opening menu, choose additional glove programs using your keypad. The gaming series automatically puts you in the menu select mode. Let's say you want to play Knight Rider. Look up Knight Rider in the manual, program I. Move the cursor and make your selection. Now you'll have 30 seconds to turn off the NES and remove the Bad Street Brawler game pack. Load the Knight Rider game and turn the NES back on. So it's a good idea to have the game you want to play handy. Now the glove is programmed to play Knight Rider and no other programming is needed. In playing Knight Rider, you bend your thumb to shoot, steer like you would a real car, and punch your fist for turbo. With Bad Street Brawler, you also get programs for Gunsmoke, Joust, Gyrus, Defender 2, Sesame Street 1, 2, 3, Pinball Games, and other useful programs you'll want to use. What do you think, kid? I can't wait to play with it. I already have a lot of those games, and now all I need is a power move. Wait till you see the games that we have planned for the future. The Third Dimension in action-adventure gaming. You're the manipulator, and this is Tech Town. Using the glove as a robotic claw, arm yourself against high-tech adversaries. Travel through time and space, literally grabbing the tools you need in pursuit of the next challenge. No one has 3D moves like you and your power glove. Search through corridors. Glide through this high-tech 3D world. The power glove is at your control. Super Glove Ball. Fast action. Played in real 3D. It's a series of handball rooms that has you swatting a ball off the walls and ceilings, knocking out tiles so you can move to the next room. Your power glove puts you right in the action in 3D space. Your actions control the ball. Feel the excitement of a real match with action sensations you've never felt in home video games. I can't wait to get back to that feature. I already know the secret steps of power, program, open and close to calibrate, watch and center, extra info, read the manual. You're okay, kid. The wizard? Man, it was way cool. There was this outrageous dude who had this thing called a power glove. Hey, that looks just like... The power glove. Everything else is child's play. Now, let's go into the game player's laboratory. We'll see how one of the game player's professional game testers uses the power glove. All these games work really well with the Power Glove. Watch how our expert player uses the glove to help him win.
Before you go looking for action in Bad Street Brawler, take some time to practice your moves with the power glove on the punching bag. Each time you advance to another stage, you'll be given a new set of offensive moves. Make sure you've got them down before you land in the thick of trouble. In the first stage, you'll be using the ear twist, the punch, and the sweep kick. This little guy might be small, but he carries a ball and chain. Handle him by sticking close to him and punching. Don't back off when he flies out of reach. Instead, follow him to his landing spot and attack him there. Hold the power glove down to duck, and you can avoid the ball and chain he throws. The ear twist is your best move in the first stage. Just make sure your opponent is tall enough to use it on, like this enemy. The gorilla looks like a tough customer, but you can waste him with your super effective ear twist. You'll finish each stage by tossing your enemy's captured weapons into this dumpster. You'll be thanked with bonus points. For the second stage, you'll need to master some new techniques, like headbutting and tripping your foes. Practice up! When you start the second stage, you'll be visited again by the same villains you dealt with before. The headbutt will take care of them in short order. Then look for a friend who can refill your life supply. Here could be another chance to refill your life, after you defeat these dwarfs. But be careful, he may leave you a surprise. It's hard to time out the stooge hit and make it work effectively. Get close to him and bend in the thumb on the power glove. The arm spins your best bet in stage three. As this big ape's finding out. Take care of wheels by ducking until just the right moment. When he stops for a second, give him the arm twist. He may be fast, but he's no match for you. If you enjoyed this great game tape, you'll really enjoy Game Players Magazine. Every exciting issue is packed full of hints, tips, and playing strategies, just like the ones on this game tape. You can order a dream subscription to both Game Players Guide to Nintendo Games and Game Players Magazine, a total of 18 awesome issues for only $25.95. Don't miss another issue. If you want to play to win, call now. Our operators are ready. Remember, this number is for subscription orders only. The dream subscription for Nintendo game players. Before you start blasting the road, you can select which course you want to drive. Beginners should choose Bubble City, the shortest course. It's easy to use the power glove for road blasters using program one. Holding your arm up makes you accelerate. Bending your thumb in shoots your guns. If you want to change the game playing style, enter in program nine from your power glove instruction manual. When you see the weapons transport, you can count on getting special tools. Catch this one and receive an Uzi cannon. It shoots a rapid-fire stream of bullets, and it's perfect for clearing your path around corners. You won't have much luck destroying the blue cars. If you choose to try, you'll have to pay the price. Next time, you'll know to floor it as soon as you see another blue car. Maximize your speed and aim your car right down the middle of the road. If you're fast enough, these roadside cannons won't be able to keep you in their sights. Although you do want to pick up the green spheres your enemies leave behind, you don't want to spend too much time looking for them. Speed has to be your top priority, not extra fuel. You'll know you're near the finish line when you hit the long straightaway. Run your machine flat out here. That way, if you run out of gas, you might still be able to coast in for the checkered flag. You should always hold your arm as high as you can. This will help you reach and remain at top speed. Listen for a special alarm sound. It means dangerous mines are waiting ahead. 
When you hear it, look up the road to see where the mines are. They're in the far left lane here. The brown spears give you even more fuel than the green ones, but they're also harder to catch. Oil spills can send you spinning. When you hit one, keep shooting as you're turning. This will get rid of anything that could block you when you continue in the right direction. Menacing bikers are also terrorizing the road. They're especially dangerous when they swerve back and forth quickly. If you're on a straightaway, you can blast them easily. Just stay in one place and let them wander into your line of fire. If you run out of fuel or crash once too often, you may think the race is over. But you can still continue playing if you have some credits left. However, you'll have to start back at the beginning of the course you were on. The power glove is very responsive to your movements. If you go off the side of the road, don't try to jerk your mean machine back onto the road. Instead, barely inch your way back onto the road, moving the power glove gently towards the center. One of the pickups the weapons transport drops makes you invincible. With it, you can even destroy the blue cars. Temporarily, that is. The best way to handle this stretch of curves is to stay in the center lane. That way, you can quickly move in either direction, if you need to. To get all the extra fuel you can, drive on the left side until you're close to the spheres. Then move across the road in one smooth path. Warning! Road mines ahead in the center lane. Move to the outside to dodge them. Rule the road and you'll earn the right to list your initials on this scoreboard. Use the glove's built-in pad for this since it's easier. Your first destination is the manhole. Duck down in it for a second, then pop back out. This makes the enemies who are chasing you disappear. When you climb down the second manhole, don't waste time on the small creatures. Keep going forward. You may need to practice your jumping with a power glove. And this is a good place to do it. Now you're going to be really glad you're wearing the power glove. Rocksteady's a tough opponent, but not tough enough to withstand the thrash mode. Enter in program 11 and use it throughout the game. Also, turn off Turbo A at the start of the game and leave it off for maximum jumping. Now wait for him to come to you. Then let him have it. Got him! After that workout, you need some nourishment. Stock up on energy by grabbing this pizza slice. Go back up the ladder to the upper level. Come back down, and there will be a fresh slice waiting. Use this method to recharge all of your turtles. This enemy will stop pursuing you and rest. Introduce him to Michelangelo's nunchucks, but stop whipping him when he stops. When he stands back up, give him more abuse. Handle the Chainsaw Maniac the same way. To make this jump, raise your arm as you normally would, but be especially careful how you hold your hand. If you close your fingers the slightest bit, you'll start an attack move that will ruin your jump.
Now it's on to your last stop in level one. As soon as you step inside, jump over the conveyor belt to avoid these flying menaces. Use Donatello against Bebop. Not only is he the strongest turtle, but his bow staff has the greatest reach. Swing the bow staff downward, and you can even block bullets. Welcome to Stage 2. You've got your work cut out for you with twice as many enemies to battle as before. Get set for Thrash Mode. These foot soldiers need to be taught a lesson. Use the down thrust on them and remember to switch off to another turtle when necessary. There's a slice of pizza up here and it's got your name on it. Speaking of pizza, here's a whole pie. Grab it quickly, then use Donatello's bow staff to eliminate the enemy who guards it. This is one of the most difficult jumps in the entire game. First, make sure you have a place to land on the other side. Then just barely tap the jump button at the far edge. Once you're on top of the dam, watch for these two ninjas. After you've gotten rid of them, look for the place where the railing is split. You'll dive in from here. It's a good idea to check in with April and Splinter on the information screen. They'll tell you how many bombs are left. You'll find underwater travel easy with a power glove. Simply put the glove where you want to go. However, you do need to be careful of the underwater currents. They'll make keeping in control more difficult. The wheel can be tricky too. Cut in toward the center, then back out when the moment's right. It may be time to change turtles if you haven't already. There's more adventure to come. If you like this game tape, you'll love Game Player's Pro Tip Hotline. Now you can hear the tips you want to know just by pushing a button on your telephone. Each week our Game Player's experts choose the best hints and tips for three hot games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just dial and select which secrets you want to hear. Every week we'll change the games and the hints. Try it today. $1.25 for the first minute, 75 cents each additional minute. Don't forget to ask your parents' permission before calling. Call 1-900-740-7000. Super Glove Ball is a 3D maze set in outer space. Your mission is to use your robotic hand to control the energy balls floating around you. Blast through the blocks and you might find a way out of the maze. We'll start by playing Super Glove Ball with the Power Glove. Hit a mystery tile and anything can happen. You could get a Super Ball. It travels at hyperspeed and can't be lost. You can even get three balls. This will help you take out more blocks faster, especially when the Super Ball is activated. When you catch an energy ball, move it forward as far into the room as you can by pushing the power glove toward the television screen. The closer you are to the question mark, the better your chances for hitting it. Normally, it's simple to continue on to another part of the maze. Just clear a wall, hold the select button down, and move the robo hand to that wall. We'll talk about some exceptions to this later. Now watch what happens on the right wall. 
By hitting a question mark, you can earn a row wiper. With this, you can clean out a row of blocks by hitting just one of them. Tap into the power of your glove by pointing your index finger while bending your last three fingers. You'll fire robo-bullets capable of destroying blocks and punishing your enemies. Here's another way to fire robo-bullets. Hit the A button on the control pad. You'll find other types of rooms in the maze. In some rooms, it's more important to hit certain blocks than to knock out entire walls. Map out these rooms for future use. It may take some practice to get used to it, but the 3D effect in Super Glove Ball is really different and a lot of fun. The witch is hard to kill. Shooting robo-bullets, and lots of them, is your best bet. Hit the right tile and you could find yourself speeding through space. The energy ball will reveal blocks that were invisible. You can earn extra lives and bullets if you're careful. Now let's hook up a regular controller pad. It works well with this game too. Make sure you turn off the game unit before you switch controllers. When you first try Super Glove Ball with a pad, you'll need to learn new moves. Here you'll press the select button to shoot instead of pointing your finger. Before moving into the maze, practice with the pad until you're comfortable with the moves. Don't always follow the arrow like the one in the center. The arrows just show you which paths are available, not necessarily which ones are the best. Experience and maps do that. Beware of the monsters that live in this maze. They can destroy energy balls or even drain your energy. Defend yourself by punching them, shooting them, or bouncing a ball off them. Punching works best against these creatures, but don't do it too much, since it takes away from your life, too. Here we go from level 32 to level 5. Going from a higher area to a lower area isn't automatically a bad thing. Some upper levels can only be reached by going to a lower level first. Figuring out where you are and where you want to be is a good reason for making maps. When you get a Super Ball, use Robo Bullets to shoot at the mystery tiles. Remember, the closer your robotic glove is to the wall, the more accurate your shooting will be. Also, try moving your robo-glove while you're shooting. This will make your bullets curve as they travel. Watch out! Hit the wrong tile and you'll warp back to level 1. This star appears in many of the rooms. When you first see it near the side, shoot toward the middle. If your timing's right, you can intercept its path. The Super Ball can be tough to catch. The best way to catch it is to center your robo hand in the middle of the screen. Then open and close the hand as quickly as you can. When the triangle on your robo glove turns blue, you've caught the ball. In room 00, you can blast into a bonus room by knocking out the square in the middle of the center wall. Practice the skill of moving your robo-glove deeper into the screen and closer to the center wall. You need to be able to catch the energy ball quickly. In higher levels, you may not get the chance to catch the ball if it has a long way to travel. 
It could get destroyed by one of your enemies as it's heading back to you. If you're clearing a side wall with robo bullets, move your robo glove against that wall so you'll fire in that direction. You'll work your way up and down the rows of blocks to finish a stage. Finally, keep checking the information shown on your instrument panel. The meter in the bottom left corner measures your energy. You'll lose power by touching an enemy, although sometimes it's necessary. Pay special attention to your ammo and energy ball counters. The lower right screen lets you know what power items you've gotten. Good luck! <laughs>